touched on this, but negative rights are like electrons in several ways. One, nobody's ever seen a negative right, just as nobody's ever seen an electron. Not even with an electro, uh, electron microscope, all you see are trails uh, where the electron, shadows of electrons, you never see the actual electron. Secondly, electrons are theoretical posits in physics, posited to explain various physical facts. Well, Reagan thinks rights are like that, that if we want to account for all of our duties to human beings, including my duty not to kill you and harvest your organs, my duty not to kill Aunt B when she's a real cantankerous woman that everybody would like to see gone, the only way to account for that, Reagan thinks, is to postulate rights. So we make a theoretical postulate, and then, just as we do in the case of physics, I mean, electrons, those are old news right now. We, we, we postulate quarks and all kinds of subatomic particles and so on um, to help us explain various phenomena. When the theory, when the positive particles work, uh, help us explain phenomena, help us with predictions, um, we think that those theoretical postulates have been confirmed. And Reagan thinks the same thing is going on in the case of rights. Well, who has negative rights? Which beings have moral rights? We've already seen Reagan says all and only those beings who have inherent value. Which are those? Remember, those are the e-souls, the experiencing subjects of a life. We're already familiar with that part of his view. Does inherent value come in degrees? Like, could you say, well, yes, human beings, moral agents have inherent value. Moral patients have some, but not as much as moral agents. Does it come in degrees? Uh, not according to Reagan. He says, all who have inherent value have it equally, regardless of race, sex, religion, species, intellectual capacity, sexual preference, and so on. He thinks this is the only way to preclude such injustices as slavery, sexual discrimination, religious persecution, speciesism, and so on. If you want to open the door to some form of perse persecution, have a graded notion of inherent value. Finally, why does he pick such a minimal criterion like being an experiencing subject of a life as the rights conferring property? Because any other property you pick, would yield the result that many humans lack rights. If you think that severely retarded human beings have rights, there's no non-speciesistic reason for denying that animals of comparable intelligence and sentience also have rights. Okay, so I, I, I know Reagan talked a little bit about this uh, in his talk, but maybe some of you weren't here. Reagan did not start out as an animal rights advocate at all. He worked his way through grad school as a butcher. Metz, Metzger. 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 Yeah. Something like that. Anyway, he got involved in human rights during the Vietnam War. And as he told us two weeks ago, he was reading the works of Gandhi uh, in relation to his concern for human rights and human rights violations associated with the war. He had never given any thought to animal rights, okay? But then it slowly, remember he's a muddler, it slowly came, he slowly started to realize he had no good reason for attributing rights to all human beings that wouldn't also extend to at least some non-human animals. And that's how he kind of started to work into this view and then has developed one of the most elaborate defenses of animal rights. So that's the strategy. What is it about normal human beings, adult normal human beings, that gives them rights? Well, if they have rights, it has to be in virtue of possessing some property or other. He thinks it's the fact that they're experiencing subjects of a life whose lives matter to them and have value independent of their usefulness to others. Well, if that's what it is in the case of normal humans, uh, moral agents, and that there are lots of other beings who satisfy that very same rights-conferring property, to be consistent, we should extend rights to those other beings. That's the structure of the argument. Okay. Briefly, some implications of the rights view. Because most of the animals we eat and routinely perform experiments on are experiencing subjects of a life, these animals have negative rights, including the right to non-interference and the right not to be killed. Killing these animals to eat them and experimenting on them violates their rights just as it would violate your rights. 
Therefore, animal agriculture and animal experimentation ought to be abolished, just as slavery and human experimentation were rightly abolished. Eating meat is wrong on this view because by buying and eating animals, one is participating in a practice that systematically exploits and violates their rights, just as eating humans would violate their rights. Okay, so that's the case in favor of animal rights. Well, what, what about the case against animal rights? Carl Cohen, he'll be speaking here in, in July, um, is one of the biggest proponents, advocates of the position that animals don't have rights. So he may have something new to say in his talk here. I don't know what he'll exactly uh, what he'll be saying here, but in his published work, he argues against animal rights roughly as follows. Okay. So first one preliminary observation. If some being A is to have um, a different moral status than some being B, there must be some morally relevant difference between A and B that accounts for their different moral status. Okay. If humans have rights and animals don't, there must be some morally relevant difference between humans and animals that accounts for this difference. Okay, so now we come to what, why Cohen thinks humans have rights. Uh, it's interesting because up to this point we kind of see some agreement between Reagan and Cohen, right? Um, uh, because Reagan agrees that moral agents are paradigm examples of rights holders. So Cohen identifies the capacity of free moral judgment as the morally relevant property that is both necessary and sufficient for having rights. Because human beings possess this property, they have rights. And this comes from his article, The Case for the Use of Animals in Biomedical Research, that was in the New England Journal of Medicine. What about animals? Well, according to Cohen, and this is a direct quote, Animals, that is, non-human animals, the ordinary sense of that word, lack this capacity for free moral judgment. They are not beings of a kind capable of exercising or responding to moral claims. Animals, therefore, have no rights, and they can have none. So, the property you have to have to be able to, to have, the property you have to have to have rights is the capacity for free moral judgment, Animals don't have that property, so they don't have rights. From the same article. Okay, well, there's a problem for Cohen, as we've seen, and that's this. Not all human beings are moral agents. Not all human beings possess the capacity for free moral judgment. What will we do with the infants and the severely retarded and the... Um, people in the throes of senile dementia that are no longer moral agents, that no longer have the capacity for free moral judgment, or never had it. Cohen attempts to circumvent this problem as follows, and this is a quote. All human beings have rights, even those who lack moral autonomy, because they all belong to a kind whose normal members possess this capacity. And all animals lack rights because they belong to kinds whose normal members lack moral autonomy. So it's rights by association, right? So even severely mentally retarded human beings, even though they lack the capacity for free moral judgment, they belong to a kind, homo sapien, where the normal homo sapien has this property, so the severely retarded gets this property uh, um, by some kind of mysterious transference. Okay. Well, assessing Cohen's case against animal rights. Whatever we might say about the case for animal rights, Cohen's case against animal rights is extraordinarily weak. Problem one, inconsistency. Cohen begins by claiming that possessing the capacity for free moral judgment is a necessary condition for having rights. Well, what are necessary conditions? This is a term of art that logicians use. The basic idea is that P, where that stands for some property, let's say,